Willie Falcone loved the good life, loved to race along in number 20. Of course, he was able to finance his high style of living by importing cocaine, federal agents claim. His coke dealing ring was reportedly the largest on the East Coast and one of the top five in the world. Until the day Falcone and alleged Lieutenant Salvador Magluta and Lorenzo Benigo were arrested and charged with smuggling nearly 75 tons of cocaine into South Florida. The feds were delighted. They seized nearly $2.1 billion worth of property as they prepared their case against the Falcone group. But then witnesses against the gang started dropping like a judge's gavel. Luis Escobita, who was going to testify against his old friends, was shot to death outside a Coconut Grove bar. No one was ever caught. Juan Barroso was going to tell what he knew about his old friends. Last August, he pulled into this gas station and was shot in the back of the head. He survived. The gunman escaped. The next to talk about the Falcone gang, Lazaro Cruz. He was shot outside his Hialeah home. He lived, but the attackers escaped. And yesterday, the latest on the witness list, Bernardo Gonzalez, was gunned down. He died. Again, the gunman escaped. But the strangest death of a friend of Falcone's was the closest to him. His wife, Eilina, was ambushed on the streets of Coral Gables last August. But while the other shootings may seem like someone's attempt to kill all the witnesses, police are certain she was not the target of a revenge killing, simply a victim of random violence. I, as police, threw out a massive dragnet hoping to track the gunman or gunmen. That, as Metro Dade's special response team swarmed the warehouse near State Road 112 and Northwest 36th Avenue, covering it from the ground and from the roof. Police stood watch behind the safety of their squad cars, poised to take in and, if necessary, take down their man. Now, according to police, this happened just after 9 o'clock last night. They say the victims pulled up in front of aircraft modular products here in Northwest 36th Avenue. When they got out of their car, police say they were greeted with a hail of gunfire. One man shot and killed, two others also shot, whisked away by ambulance, both in critical condition. Still another man, police say, injured after he fell trying to escape. So I don't know if they had made it inside or if they were still out in front of the building at the time that the shooting occurred, whether the, whether the person walked up to them or whether someone shot from the top of a building. At Jackson Memorial Hospital, relatives waited for word on loved ones as police kept a close eye. Meanwhile, at the scene, police blocked off streets leading to the area as they began to piece together what happened. Now, an informed source tells 7 News this may, it may have been an organized hit against a witness in the trial of reputed drug kingpins Willie Falcone and Sal Magluta. As you may know, three others linked to that case have already been shot. Police, though, insist it's too early for them to speculate. There's a lot of speculation, and, and, and it's all it is at this point is speculation. We don't know exactly what it is. We, we don't know whether it was a hit. We don't know if it was a, an attempted robbery. We just don't know at this point. In Miami, I'm Craig Stevens, 7 News. Bernardo Gonzalez is dead. His younger brother, Umberto, is not expected to survive the gunshot wound to his head. Both men were shot at the family home in horse country of Southwest Dade yesterday. Five or six people were seen running away after the shots were fired. The brothers, boat builders, supposedly were meeting potential buyers. But the Gonzalez's also had another occupation. Both were tied into the drug world. Bernie Gonzalez was, sources tell Eyewitness News, a major offloader of narcotics before he pled guilty to drug and tax charges. Bernie Gonzalez had cut short a prison sentence after agreeing to testify against Augusto Willie Falcone and his alleged drug dealing partner, Sal Magluta. The two were considered by many in law enforcement as top dealers controlling one of the top five drug cartels in the entire world. Connie Hicks, Channel 10 Eyewitness News, Daybreak. Bernardo Gonzalez's deal with federal officials helped him avoid life in prison. It got him death in his own backyard. Gonzalez was gunned down inside his truck Tuesday. His brother was also killed. Possibility of drug involvement? No, 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 no. no. These are good people. Good is a relative term. Gonzalez was supposed to testify against Willie Falcone and Sal Magluta at their October drug trial. Falcone and Magluta are charged with smuggling over 15 tons of cocaine into the United States from the Bahamas in the 1980s. It's one of the largest drug cases in federal history. But potential witnesses keep getting in the way of bullets. So far, three have been shot, including Luis Escobedo, killed outside a Miami disco, and Juan Barosa, shot in the head when he drove into this gas station. He lived. 
This government informant claims Falcone and Magluda are orchestrating the shootings from their jail cells. He says he spoke to their associates. They were talking about how they were going to get back at whoever spoke and whoever testified and how they were going to teach, they were going to show the snitches or the government informants a lesson of what was going to go down. Falcone and Magluda lived the fast life after dropping out of a Miami high school. They lived in luxury. They raced speedboats. The federal indictment claims they used those same fast boats to bring over $2 billion worth of cocaine into the United States. Gonzalez himself made $75 million in profit by being in charge of offloading the boats. He was arrested, and federal agents offered him a choice, testify against Falcone, Magluda, and others, or spend life in prison. The way the sentencing guidelines have changed criminal law have created major drug dealers who get arrested, face life imprisonment, and then don't have a choice, really, but to cooperate. Gonzalez served 44 months in prison and reportedly recruited eight others to testify against Falcone and Magluda. He also helped make cases against 20 other smugglers. He refused to go into the government's witness protection program. Federal prosecutors, though, claim Gonzalez's murder won't destroy their case. This is one of the biggest drug cases in U.S. history, and federal officials say they can make the case against Falcone and Magluda using other witnesses. The problem is keeping them alive until the October trial. Charles Jaco, CNN, Miami. One dead and three others injured. The call came in as a sniper shooting. About 75 officers responded, barricaded the area, evacuated residents, and sent out a canine unit looking for suspects. We go now live to the scene where Eyewitness News reporter Connie Hicks has the very latest. Good morning, Connie. Well, Peggy and Anna, if you've been describing, this has been a wild and exciting night and certainly not in the positive sense. We are on Northwest 37th Avenue. We are about a mile and a half or so east of Miami International Airport. It's too dark right now to see down at the end of 37th Avenue here, but there is a warehouse. Shortly after 9 o'clock last night, there were probably gun men. The police believe there was more than one person on the roof of a warehouse at the end of the street. He or they fired at four men that pulled up into a car. We know this much. Uh, three of the men have been uh, injured. One man has been killed. SWAT team um, responded shortly after 9 o'clock. You see them on the buildings of the warehouse after the calls came in. The firing had already begun by then. As we said, one, uh, three men were injured. One has been killed. Names have not been released except for one of the, um, one of the first injured who was uh, sh hit in the stomach. He is uh, Daniel Zamora. He is said to be in good condition. There was no other information on the uh, dead man or the other two who were injured. One, we were told, was injured when he fell. Uh, trying to escape and injured his hip. Police closed off 112. There was a massive traffic jam. They spent um, up until the uh, mid-morning hours looking for the gunmen, um, or who they believe are the gunmen, trying to find them. They have not found the person who did this. That and so consequently, at this point now, 6 o'clock in the morning, we don't know why the shooting began. Witnesses who were here at the time said they heard at least nine shots ringing out. This bully. You heard six gunshots? Yeah. After that, three more. Different gun. Three more different shots? And different guns. And then you saw police bring out three wounded people? All right. We found uh, three people had been shot. Uh, one is fatal, two are critical, and all have been transported to JMH. One person uh, that was transported also uh, was trying to escape uh, the people who were shooting him. And in doing that, he fell and broke his hip. Okay. Are we talking one, more than one gunman at this point? Well, I don't know. I don't know how many gunmen there are, but it was enough to create, you know, four people, three people getting, getting shot and one hurting himself very badly. The original report was a man on the roof firing. I've heard it, but I don't know. Allegedly, the people that were, were injured were, drove, had recently drove up to the building. So I don't know if they had made it inside or if they were still out in front of the building at the time that the shooting occurred, whether the, whether the person walked up to them or whether someone shot from the top of a building. Those things just have not been determined. And one other thing that has not been determined and apparently is largely speculative, but police have said that there is a possibility and why there is a possibility, we don't know, that somehow this shooting may have something to do with an upcoming uh, drug trial of uh, Willie Falcone and Sal Magluda. They are sort of colorful figures in town. 
um, who are facing a, a large multi-con indictment for drug trafficking. In the past few years, five of the witnesses involved in that trial have been shot at, two of which have died. Why police think that there may be, and they are stressing maybe some connection between the shooting at this uh, aircraft modular parts warehouse here and that trial, we don't know yet, but we hope to find out. Police indeed are still on the scene, back down the street working on it. They are also in, in, uh, waiting for daylight to continue their search for the gunmen. This is Connie Hicks reporting live from Miami, uh, near Miami International Airport. Okay. Well, this is only Freedom for the God. man feds it's consider one of the nation's think, uh, biggest drug traffickers media, ever. Think, uh, Sal Magluta bonded out of jail this God, morning. Fam. I just hope that, we, that our justice system respects the system and respects that a jury found us not guilty. We, we went to trial. We did it the way this country and this constitution was meant. And uh, I just hope it's respected and not uh, retaliation. Magluta is free on the following terms. He puts up a bond worth about $400,000. He wears an electronic surveillance ankle bracelet. He abides by a curfew. And he remains in the supervision of his brother-in-law, who happens to be one of his lawyers. I just pray there's a part of me left inside as Willie and... and uh, I just hope that uh, he'll enjoy this day too. The alleged drug lord is free while he awaits a money laundering trial in Jacksonville. In another trial, one that ended a week ago, he and his co-defendant Willie Falcone were acquitted on charges they smuggled more than 75 tons of cocaine into the country. A magistrate denied bond for Falcone for the pending trial because unlike Magluta, he faces illegal firearms charges. Prosecutors tried to get Magluta's bond revoked. Their effort failed when a magistrate ruled the government's arguments were without merit. Attorney Roy Black says prosecutors have been pulling out all the stops to keep Magluta and Falcone behind bars. The United States government is obsessed with Willie Falcone and Sal Magluta. Proof of that is today they're willing to do virtually anything to keep them in jail. They will not respect the jury's verdict. They'll leak information. They'll try to trash him and his lawyers and everything possible. And this is just a continuing obsession that's very unseemly and undemocratic. Friends of the defendants celebrated the verdicts outside the Miami Federal Courthouse. Very happy. Justice prevailed. Justice prevailed, they say, for two men accused of being the top drug traffickers in the U.S. in the 1980s. Augusto Willie Falcone and Salvador Sal Magluta were each acquitted on several charges of smuggling over $2 billion worth of cocaine into the U.S. and laundering millions of dollars of drug money. For both Mr. Falcone and Mr. Magluta, and it was a long time coming. It took four and a half years of work, but finally came to fruition. But for the prosecution, the verdicts were a great disappointment. This is certainly one of the, uh, the most uh, startling results uh, that I can recall uh, in the time I've been U.S. attorney in a narcotics case. The prosecutors argued that Falcone and Malgluda used the money from their drug smuggling to buy palatial homes and to live a lavish lifestyle. After the two were indicted, two prosecution witnesses were killed. Two more were wounded. Attorneys for the two defendants denied their clients were involved. Throughout the trial, prosecutors say they had a lot of evidence, among them government witnesses who testified in exchange for lighter sentences. The defense argued those witnesses were unreliable. The jury rejected lying government witnesses. That's it, pure and simple. Kindle Coffee responded by saying it's normal for drug cases to have witnesses with criminal this backgrounds. And despite the verdicts, he stands by his it. evidence. We believe the government presented overwhelming evidence uh, of a wide variety of sorts. Uh, documentation, tapes, uh, and that it was uh, an overwhelming case that was superbly prosecuted, a tremendous job by the investigative team, and while we have uh, no explanation for the result, uh, we of course appreciate that in our system it is the jury that uh, renders the verdicts. You only get out in a box. You don't get out after X number of years on parole. You do every single day. So suddenly there's, it isn't light at the end of the tunnel, it's a bright and beautiful shiny day that they can look forward to. Now, do they both face money laundering charges? Yes, in they're both indicted in the same indictment. Same indictment, okay. And nothing in California then? Neither nothing one. at all in California. There had been and, uh, some prosecutions in California and those were dismissed. What, what is the money laundering charge? What happened? What is the basis of that? There was a firm, KS&W, which manufactured boats and also rigged boats for racing, open ocean uh, 
big boat racing. And uh, that company was allegedly funded by the proceeds of the alleged cocaine sale activities of Willie and Sal. So naturally that was all incorporated in this huge, broad, widely ranging prosecution through which we have just come. And you said that there was also a gun, gun possession or gun purchase? I think that dates all the way back to 1983. Uh -huh. but so there's those two then? Those the two, for, that's for Falcone. Falcone, and what about? Magluta only oh. has the money laundering charge. Okay, I'm sorry, the gun purchase was? was Charged the, against Falcone. But 83? 1983. Okay. Okay, great. Okay? Perfect. It's possible, practically speaking. <laughs> and Willie and Sal hitting the street on Tuesday. Because one way or the other, there is going to be some kind of delay on the part of the government, whether it's through the device called us back for uh, a kind of uh, housekeeping meeting, and also to advise us of some notes that the jury had sent a hung jury. Mm -hmm. Then at a quarter to seven last night when we got the phone call that there was a verdict, mm. it truly startled me and I walked into that courtroom very fast. You can never tell. I mean, oh, yeah. they said that in the OJ uh, The Magluta side of the table had already had celebration um, visit reservations at the restaurant. <laughs> They're still <laughs> celebrating a little. <laughs> or, or talking. Talking or between the two. Yeah. So, so Tuesday, ninety percent shot again. Ninety percent right? shot, all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, essentially, to what do you attribute the uh, the not guilty verdict? I, th I think it was a categorical rejection by the jury of the theory of prosecution, which was a prosecution based on twenty-seven informants whose testimony was paid for by promises of freedom. And but you but you were not so sure when he walked in and when he heard that they did uh, have a verdict. Were you did you have your certain doubts as to what what it was going to be? Well, you always do. The government put on a, a, a very resourceful prosecution for four months. They presented 27 different witnesses who pointed fingers of accusation at Mr. Magluder and Mr. Falcone. Mm -hmm. So we had concerns that the jury would not reject all of the testimony. We were thrilled they did, and we think it's a, a great statement on behalf of the jury system. Mm -hmm. What holds, uh, what's in store in the, for the future of, uh, of Magluta? What's in store for him now? We hope that he feels the ex full exhilaration of freedom on Tuesday. He is being held only by an ancient you know, conspiracy to money launder. It's a five-year statutory maximum. He has served four and a half years in the worst prisons in America, and we are anxious and hopeful that we can persuade a magistrate judge on Tuesday to release him. Okay, perfect. Self and Roy walking out of jail again. How old are, how old are they? They're 40. Both of them are 40 years old? Yep. And they both went to high school to that the other? Both went to Miami that? City, which is to be presumed innocent and yet be detained. Mm -hmm. For four and a half years. Right. It took that long to come to trial. It took that long to come to trial. Alina Falcone's husband has been an inmate at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Southwest Dade since October of last year. That's when Willie Falcone was arrested by federal marshals inside this posh Fort Lauderdale home. The Falcones reportedly rented the house for $9,000 a month while Falcone was on the lam. Willie Falcone is one of 10 people named in a 24-count indictment, charging him with smuggling 75 tons of cocaine into the U.S. and laundering millions of dollars in drug money. Federal agents say Falcone amassed more than $2 billion worth of real estate and other property in Dade and Monroe counties. In his spare time, Willie Falcone raced power boats and was apparently very good at it. Along with partner Sal Magluta, who also faces drug charges, Falcone won several big-time races. The driveway of Falcone's home in southwest Dade was packed with cars today, but one man leaving the house warned us to stay away. No 
Metro-Dade police emphasize they have no reason to believe Alina Falcone's murder was in any way connected to her husband's alleged drug dealing. They say she was simply a victim of a senseless street crime. They had seen Alina driving in her Jaguar. They had decided that she looked like a wealthy person. She looked like an easy target for them to rob. It happened August 6, 1992, outside a beauty supply shop on Ponce de Leon in Coral Gables. Alina Falcone gunned down as she left the salon and headed for her car. In opening arguments today, Prosecutor Catherine Vogel told the jury three men, including Charles Cheatham and his partner, nicknamed Seaman, tried to snatch Falcone's purse, but she resisted. And this defendant jumps into her car, almost his whole body, so where the only thing that's hanging out are his legs. And he gets into a struggle with Alina over her purse. This defendant then said to Seaman, who was standing outside the Jaguar, shoot her, shoot her. That's exactly what Seaman did. Defense attorney Ron Gaynor says Cheatham was not the trigger man and didn't want anyone hurt. Charles Cheatham fled with the purse, yes. He was apprehended in Broward County six days later, yes. But the bottom line is he didn't use a firearm and he wasn't going to use a firearm on Alina Falcone. He made a conscious decision not to do so. That's why he's not guilty of first degree murder.